This edition of My Thoughts Monday is brought to you by Val Performance, the team behind the Nordboard, Force Decks, the Groin Bar, and Human Track. Guys, the most important ability for all of our athletes is availability, and that's the absolute goal of Val Performance, is to provide solutions to performance professionals so that we can get the right information to make the right decision at the right time for the betterment of the athletes that we get to work with. To do this, guys, they have a wide range of validated products that focus on usability and having being founded by the School of Exercise and Nutrition Sciences at the Queensland University of Technology, they're extremely evidence-based and they're beyond transparent. I can tell you that our time using the Nordboard and being involved with Force Decks, we have been introduced to so many amazing people that have truly helped us become better coaches, have a better understanding, not just of the technology, but also what we're doing with our athletes. So make sure you hop over to ValPerformance.com today to make sure you check out what they got. It's going to make you better and to do better by your athletes. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some awesome practitioners who are always trying to evolve and continue to grow professionally throughout their career. The problem with many of us, though, is finding a new outlet, a new way and a new perspective on the questions that we may have, whether it be programming, whether it be situational with dealing with coaches, or whether it be career advice. Because all too often what happens is we get stuck in with the same group of friends and the same group of colleagues that we reach out to for advice repeatedly over and over again. But what we should really be looking for is different perspectives, different people who have been through different situations who can help us make better decisions both for ourselves and our athletes. And one awesome place to start with that is the forums in the Strength Coach Network. In the forums in the Strength Coach Network, You'll be able to reach out and get feedback, input, and advice from coaches from all over the world, from everything from career advice to training modalities to programming. There's people there just for the same reason as you are, to try to get better, to learn, to share information, and to grow the field of strength and conditioning. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash cvasps, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash cvasps, to dive into all that great content today and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. Hey everyone, well my thoughts Monday I'm doing here for uh, DeMeo, trying to help him out by uh, diversifying our thoughts. Um, I did a video for him a couple years ago, I don't remember if it was my thoughts Monday or one of the other uh, ton of free information that Jay gives out, where I talked about culture and kind of what I consider the BS behind when people talk of culture Um, and I kind of want to follow that up a little bit and talk about culture because at the end of the day uh, everything we do is it's a people business if you want to get someone stronger more explosive whatever you better have the culture in place to do it Um, as I look at different strength coaches it's funny people love to bash each other Um, oh I can't remember his name the guy out of Oregon now um don't know him but he did a a fundraiser to you know do curls for a month or whatever and uh, it was kind of funny i was watching it on instagram people were bashing it and i was like he's doing a fundraiser for a good cause i don't remember the cause but what's the problem with that and you know he's having fun doing it let's be honest here if you ever lifted weights you wanted your arms to be bigger so what's the problem i don't understand it but um to me, that's the little stuff that creates culture. And sometimes it's a little hokey and it's a little, uh, for lack of a better term, um, you know, childish. I don't know. But who cares if it gives you some culture? Um, so I see a lot of people going around judging how others are building their culture without actually being there. And it, it, that, that, that bothers me. But what I really want to delve into is what it, where's culture come from? And I'm going to tell you right now, it's one simple thing hiring who you bring on board to your to your staff to your department because at the end of the day who you hire is the single most important thing for your culture do not hire the smartest person hire the best person the person who will do the best for you because at the end of the day you can know everything ever written by Ishran and Zasorski and all these smart people and and be able to quote Mel Sif and blah 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 and that is all good that's great. I think it's awesome. But you know what? If you're not a good person, 
you don't have a good heart, you don't believe in servant leadership, you don't trust and respect with and for those around you, and that is, and I, I don't like using the, this phrasing, but but I will here, for those above and below you, um, you know, you've heard many times to judge someone by how they treat the janitor. Uh, you know, I'm proud to say that me and my girl Michelle, who does our garbage twice a day, does a great job with it. The other day I was walking down, she was listening to some Funkadelic, and uh, you know, me, her, and George Clinton were, man, we were killing it in, the, in, the, in front of the wig room like it was a, uh, like it was a wedding. Because if you hire people who care, who are down with servant leadership, your culture, in many ways, will take care of itself. Now that doesn't mean it gives you an excuse to be lazy. Bobby Smith. Thank you, Bobby. Called me out uh, unintentionally on this when he showed me his list of the seven things that everyone that comes in his facility kind of reads and abides to. Like, this is our seven tenets, if you will. And when I saw that, I said, man, we're not doing enough. And so I sat down with, with, with our staff, and we came out with a, our own list. Because Bobby made a great point. He said, people have stolen this list and used it as their own. He said, this is my list. This is me your list create your own list create the things that you believe in and if you have good people in place then your list is going to be strong and as we sat there going over our list it was funny we agreed on say about 90 percent of the list and the 10 percent we didn't agree on at least we saw the other person perspective said i can dig that and i can get down with that and i can do that and then from that we came out with two or three bullet points for each of those six just for us and we read to everyone our staff we read to our athletes and to me, because we had the right people on board, we were able to come out with a strong list, a list that I think is going to make us better, a list that will only help us grow as a department and only help us make our athletes at our university better. So the ways to make your culture better, A, hire the right people from interns to student workers. And the reality is you don't control who probably the athletic trainer you're working with is or the assistant coach and you're always going to have somebody you say that isn't a good person for our culture but that's fine if you build a strong culture it can handle some hits it can handle a hit here and there but you better have those right people in place to get that culture so moral story hire the right people make sure they're good human beings we can teach any skill set i actually said to one of my staff members today calm down same brain surgery and I still stand by that. It's not brain surgery. Let's have some fun. Let's make some people better. Let's hire some awesome people. Peace.